Hey, what's up everybody? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. SCG Mike here with another video for you guys. This is a video for everybody with low RAM and not a good processor. This is for low spec guys that are having issues joining traffic servers. All right, so you're having problems getting into traffic servers. The game's not giving you an error. You're loading into the server. It might pop in for a sec. You get disconnected. You might start loading in. It might go black screen. You get booted out. No errors, nothing like that. You just can't join some servers because of traffic. Well, first, we need to explain why this is happening before we fix it. So why are you not able to join the traffic servers? Well, this is why. If you open up Content Manager, let's give it a quick sec here, and you go to, let's say, single player real quick in Drive, and you click on a car, and you say you go to this car here, and you open Custom Showroom. It's actually going to show you the triangles on the car, which is like your polygon, basically your poly count, objects, and materials. In these traffic servers, you will have a lot of highly detailed cars, which will go three, four, five, up to ten times, even more than ten times this amount. So in some servers, you can be trying to render cars and use much more RAM and VRAM, because cars have up to 10 to 15 times more detail, more materials, more objects, they're higher detail, this is going to big time affect your performance, affect your RAM, and everything like that. So you can actually go through your whole entire car list, and you can check out every single car, and you can see what kind of impact having multiple of these cars would. So for example, let's just say you're on a really small track, and it's something like just a test track, like the drift track. Anybody can run that map on pretty much any type of system with decent FPS in any car almost. But let's say you're playing that track online and you got 20 people in there, right? So 240,000 times 20, you're looking at about 4.8 million polygons from having 20 of these cars in the game. So what happens if you have 15 of these cars that have six times more detail well, if you're cruising with those guys, you got 15, 20 million polygon rendered on your screen, and it's going to affect your game big time. You might not even be able to join that server. So this is what server owners don't tell you, is that they don't minimize all this stuff for you guys. They don't go and make cars as optimized as they could, because they want to have the best detail, so those big boy PC owners can advertise their servers for them and make it look like it's the best thing ever, when in reality, most people can't even play it. So that's one thing that you want to look at. The other thing is going to be your map and how many traffic cars are allowed in the server, how many are per player, which you can't see, and the server owners probably don't tell you that, and how many players are allowed to actually be in the server at the same time, and how many players will be around each other at the same time, and combined, how much traffic and player cars are you going to have on your screen at the same time. This is all going to affect your performance, your ability to join the server, and your ability to play the game just in general in those servers. So one thing to keep in mind when you're going through all this is you just go to the server list and you start looking at servers, downloading the content, and you start looking at the detail of the cars. And if you're having issues, you can check out that one way. That's just to check out how bad the performance is, why the servers you can't join them, why the RAM is so high when you're trying to join, why you can't join with 16 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM, this is for everybody that's having that problem. This is one thing you can look at. So how do you give yourself the best chance, the best chance of joining one of these servers? Well, that's why I have my task manager up, because most people that are playing this game, I notice, they don't prepare their PC to play the game. So if you're going to be joining a high-end traffic server, servers that use lots of RAM and stuff like that, I have an 8-core Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, 4080 Super, 64 gigs of RAM. Look at me in Task Manager. I'm using 12 gigs of memory right now. That means if I have 16 gigs of memory and I don't do anything about this right now, I'm not going to be able to join the server because I'm already using 12. And I'm using 15-20% to 20 of my CPU already as well. So what we need to do here is we need to go through a couple of these windows in Task Manager, and what we're going to do is we're going to get this right down to almost nothing. So the first thing you need to do is end the task, 
on everything that you're not going to be using. So I'll close internet, I'll close Firefox. Discord is optional because you might actually want Discord open if you're uh, playing with your friends. And then as you can see, the CPU is already dropped down to 4%. The memory is dropped down even more. Once you're in the game, you should be able to close Steam. It may or may not run without Steam on for you, but you should be able to close it. The other thing that we're going to do real quick is we're going to go to Details. And when you go into Details, what you're going to be presented with here is a really big list of all these other things that you have. So in processes, you right click and you end everything that you're not using. It'll take you a while to get through everything. And then we go into details and we start looking for things that we aren't going to be using that is running. So what I do is I go running and I make it so all of my running stuff is here. And you can go by name. And I'm not using Adobe, so I'm going to end this task in here. And I'm going to keep on going down and I'm going to be stopping a whole bunch of things. Discord and process tree. This is Microsoft Edge stuff, I think. And process tree. We're just going to have to keep ending all of these by themselves. But as you keep ending these, what you'll notice is that you're going to start seeing that even more things are being less used. So all of this Steam service, Steam.exe stuff, you might be able to play the game while not using it, you might not. So let's just keep going through here. And anything that we recognize as something that we're actually not going to be using, we will just go ahead and just completely get rid of it like that. So let's click on running again, and let's just go see here. A game input host service, I can end that process, I can end this process. And then we also want to go into services. Services is where you're going to be able to stop things. I actually should have gone here first, my bad. This is where you're going to be able to stop the service from running before you end the, the process. So it won't come back on. So if you come through here, you're going to have a description. You want to use this to make your description really big. So it gives you an idea of what it does. And then you want to drag this over so you can see how much is here and what it is. So I'm not playing Xbox Live. I'll stop that service. You see what I'm saying? I don't need one sync on right now. I'll stop that service. <clears throat> and then you keep going down. And you keep going down. And you just keep looking for things that you're not going to be using that you know are going to be okay. For you to disable you don't want to disable things that you don't know and a really good thing is to scroll down here and look through the description mystic light service i don't need that while i'm playing aceto keep going down keep going down microsoft St microsoft store install i don't need that service on gaming services i don't need that on game input service i probably don't need that on but if it stays on then i probably do for some reason that's okay, so we'll keep that on. <clears throat> Sorry. And if you go through here, and you notice all of a sudden that, like, something stops working, then you probably just disabled the service. That was something that you shouldn't have. Uh, with notifications for Windows, we'll turn that service off. Microsoft account sign-in, we'll turn that one off. Wi-Fi direct, I don't use Wi-Fi, we'll turn that one off. You see what I'm saying? There's a whole bunch of things you can go through here. System main, you actually don't need that one on. And you keep going down everything that's running and everything you don't need. Radio management service, I don't need that one. Plug play, you probably don't need that. MSI center, we can turn off our MSI center, we don't need that. And let's keep going on. We don't need device install. We're not installing any devices. And we'll just go with that for now. So then what you do is you go back into your processes. And you go and re-remove anything that was here. Start, with by hitting, start by hitting the CPU at the top to bring everything that's using the most CPU. And you can see most of this is using zero. 
Then we'll go to memory. We'll hit memory there. And we'll see what's using the most memory. Nothing really crazy. So the next thing we can do here, another thing that you want to do is if you go ahead now, maybe this will end and it won't come back. Right? No, it came back. That's okay. All good. So now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to type in msconfig and we're going to go to the startup tab and open task manager and we're in the startup apps and you just want to make sure you right click and disable anything that you're not using when you're starting your PC. So now you can see I'm down to 7 gigs of memory being used and 3%, 4% CPU, 2% instead of what it was at and this is while i'm streaming so once i stop streaming and close obs and the, whatever else that i have everything's going to be better so now another thing we can do is if you really want to get deep in there you can type in regedit like that and you can scroll through here and you will find a whole bunch of things that you can actually delete because they're uh, old game save stuff old games that you don't play, content for old games, uh, any old things that you might have installed for apps and stuff like that, like iRacing. I don't have iRacing anywhere. You know, I can literally just delete iRacing right out of here. You can go ahead and delete anything out of here that you know that you don't use. So there's all of that you can do as well. And then the other thing that we want to look at here is we want to go to our local disk or whatever under my PC, wherever I'm going to find that on Windows 11. There it is. Let me go to this PC, local disk C, program 86 for me. It might not be for you. You go to Steam, and then we go to Steam Apps, Common, any games that you've uninstalled that you're not playing, go ahead and delete all that stuff from here because the more space you have, in theory, the quicker things can, can run, right? So if you're running on a system and you have a two terabyte hard drive and only 12 gigs of space left on it, your game actually is not going to run as good. So this is where you can delete a bunch of games. And another good folder to go into is if you just go back to your file explorer and you find where the users tab is, which I just have to look for real quick, users and then SCG Mike. You go into the app data folder and this is where you also will find a whole bunch more things for data for games and stuff that you've probably already deleted things will still linger around in here that you can delete to save more space so that's another thing you can do and then basically what you do is you go ahead and you restart your pc which i'm going to do now and i'll make a quick little clip and show you guys the difference after i restart my pc and then do all of this stuff again the performance usage is going to be minimal, so I'll be right back.